Welcome to Alpha Wolf Capital. I'm Tim and I want to personally thank you for stopping by. This channel is designed to help small companies, both public and private, gain exposure with potential consumers, investors, even partners. Take, for example, today's guest, CEO Jin Kang from Wide Point Corporation. Wide Point has a proprietary technology platform. They secure identity management, which is their IAM program, where they maintain compliance and mitigate data breaches. They also have Manage, which is their managed mobility service and technology asset management. And then they have Analyze, digital billing and analytics. Wide Point serves the government in several high profile contracts and are about to expand into several commercial contracts. But I'll let Jen share that with you in just a moment. This is not to be taken as investment advice. I am not a certified financial planner. This is for education and entertainment purposes only. I encourage everyone to do their own due diligence. Hey everybody, Tim from the Alpha Wolf Capital coming at you with a uh, follow-up to a great story, one that I have always uh, said is not being um, rewarded for the accomplishments that, that have been made there. Um, y point, W-Y-Y is the ticker symbol. Jin Kang, CEO and turnaround specialist uh, here in the house. Get ready to tell us all the great things that are happening over at WYY. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Tim. It's always a pleasure to speak with you, not only about our business, but you know, all about the general, you know, uh, uh, status of the economy and the political landscape. All of that is it's always entertaining. <laughs> well, I'm glad you feel that way, Jim. Uh, so, look, you just had a, a, a you had a, a, I would say, a very um, an, an excellent quarter, right? In, in, in a challenging environment. Yeah, we've been having, you know, good quarters, you know, for the past three, past four quarters. Uh, we've been now cash flow positive for the past, uh, you know, three quarters, uh, four, one, and two of this year. And so, you know, uh, the third quarter is looking looking pretty strong as well. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, just go over the, uh, the 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 third quarter numbers. I mean, we were free cash flow positive, which makes now one full calendar year of cash flow positive, and it's going to continue for the rest of uh, this year. And uh, fourth quarter is going to be a pretty decent quarter, pretty strong quarter. Um, we've implemented uh, some new customers which uh, um, uh, contributed to our unbilled uh, um, um, invoices. And we're making good progress on that. And we should um, continue to add, you know, to our cash balance. Um, you know, well, we finished uh, Q3 with uh, almost 6 million in cash, 5.7. And uh, um, we're probably going to be at, you know, 8 to 10 million in cash uh, at the end of this year because we're working through those uh, unbilled. So, Everything is going well. Um, you know, uh, we had some additional contracts uh, news, about 15 million of new contracts uh, that we announced. Um, um, and and uh, our, our, you know, mobile anchor solution is now taking foothold in these federal agencies. And what that is, is that we're able to put the, the most powerful multi-factor authentication solution onto these mobile devices, smartphones. And you can use that for physical and logical access, replacing the uh, the, the card uh, that that we've been issuing for the federal government. So um, I think that that's going to you know uh, bode well for us. And uh, we have now um, you know uh, concentrating on our uh, device as a service, and we're talking large material contracts in the commercial sector, um, and so we see our device as a service um, in being a growth area and our mobile anchor digital certificate onto these, on these mobile devices as to be, uh, you know, our, our, uh, uh, you know, uh, go to market 2025 event. And there's going to be a lot of news coming out on those two fronts. So 
Let, let's let's talk about how secure that mobile digital mobile anchor is. How, how secure is it? Yeah. So our digital certificate, our multi-factor authentication solution that is currently being issued on these cards are the most secure multi-factor authentication solution that is available on the market today. And it cannot be hacked. It hasn't been hacked yet to be hacked, even by the the strongest, uh, you know, most powerful programs that are out there. It would take currently about 140 years to break in, break the encryption that is on that chip. I got all kinds of time, Jim. Right, right. 140 years. <laughs> we all have that. Right? And so, so if you have some, you know, time to spend trying to break that encryption, you can try that. Now, what we're doing is we're we have been successfully we have successfully issued these digital certificates onto these mobile devices. And we've already have rolled the, that solution out to two of our federal government agencies. And um, we're working with several other agencies to be able to now essentially replace this 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 card, this form factor with uh, um, our mobile anchor solution. And, and um, as I said earlier in the non-recorded session is that even the most sophisticated program to break uh, this encryption um, you know, haven't haven't been successful yet. None of these, you know, uh, programs out there. Um, and as I said, 140 years for even the most powerful computer to be able to break that encryption. So, um, and if uh, what does that mean for the person that's having a conversation on that phone or sending emails on that phone? Does that mean that you know nobody's hacking in and listening to their call? correct? If you use our solution to encrypt your, you know, files and your communication um, with with the with the next person, um, it it would take 140 years to break that encryption to get to the information that is on the inside, right? Okay. And so it's it's absolutely secure, and um, we see uh, more and more adoption, especially on the federal government, to go, going from this form factor to this form factor. And now, since we're able to put it on their mobile device, one of the, the key thing that was holding us back at the, uh, the K through 12 was that they, they really didn't want the form factor of having a you know, card. They wanted to have that digital certificate on their mobile devices. And so we've done that now. Um, and as I said, we successfully tested and we have rolled it out to you know, a couple of customers. And so if you see the next you know, press release, um, you know, adding commercial customers and other federal agencies, you know that that's taken effect and it's it's getting a good foothold in the in, in the, these large enterprises. Um, you should see a few of those um, in the next couple of quarters. Um, and so it's very secure and it is tied to your mobile device and it's, it's going to continue to, you know, gain steam as we go. As I said about the, you know, the device as a service solution that we're rolling out. And it's essentially it's a, full management of these mobile devices and and our users our customers will pay a uh, fixed monthly fee and they will get the hardware they will get the software they will get the management they will get the visibility all of the reporting and all of the logistics uh, 24 by 7 help desk everything that has to do with this mobile phone will be had through a you know a seat management monthly subscription if you will um you know for that for that capability so that's a reoccurring revenue model. Sounds that's, like. a, that's a recurring revenue model. It's, you know, our our, our revenues are 95% plus recurring. Um, and and if you can imagine, if you if you buy a, a device as a service and you own one of these things, you know, I, you know, when do you see yourself going away from that, right? You pay a small monthly fee to get that service. Um, and not only that, we help you upgrade, do the tech refresh, um, you know, every, you know, the 12 months, 18 months, depending on the contract. And not only that, we can help you secure that device, right? We can help you secure this device um, with the, the most, you know, secure multi-factor authentication solution available on the market. And so we're right at the confluence of mobility management and cybersecurity. And, you know, this this is this market is going to continue to grow and it is, go, you know, continuing to grow. And it, you saw from our revenue, I mean, we did um, what, 100, uh, almost 105 million in top line revenue uh, as a, for the full as a year to date. Right. For three quarters. And um, if we 
keep the same 34.6 million quarterly run rate, I mean, you could see where, where we'll end up, right? So 105 plus 34, 35 million, I think I can do the math there. Um, but uh, and and our you know our our profit gross profitability is also improving. Um, I think in Q3, um, uh, um, our gross profit you know excluding our carrier services revenue was like 38 percent versus 35 percent you know last year. So it's continuing to improve. And um, and this 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 whole you know trusted mobility management that confluence of you know uh, um, mobile management services plus our identity management solution, what we call TM2, Trusted Mobility Management, is continuing to gain steam um, with device as a service, with mobile anchor. These are our two new SaaS model uh, revenue streams. And uh, it, it's, it's all good. It's all good news and it's all recurring revenue. We still have zero bank debt, right? Um, and we have cash on the balance sheet. Um, and so there's a lot yeah. of good, good things happening. And how many shares do you have in, in, in outstanding? Um, I think we have something like nine and a half uh, a million shares outstanding, which is not a lot. And <laughs> insider insiders own uh, uh, something like uh, 14, 15% of outstanding shares. Um, and, and so, you know, all of the management team, all the board members, uh, we are, you know, aligned with our investors. And... Um, it's it's just a matter of execution now. We we just need to continue to execute our organic growth, which we are doing, and um, you know we're going to turn the corner to profitability in 2025 for the full year. Um, and you know if there are opportunities for us to get bigger quicker through uh, you know potentially doing an acquisition, we can do that with cash generated now. Uh, now we talked about this last time that we met, and and you were pretty pretty adamant that. The, the, the place that you would be looking is not for another publicly traded company, but more for yeah. privately held. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, public companies, publicly traded companies are, you know, those deals are really difficult to do because um, I think that there's a um, unrealistic expectations on, you know, what their company's worth. Um, commercial entities for, you know, private, private entities are, are I think a, a little easier um, you know, uh, and, and the reason for that is because they have to be profitable. If they're not profitable, uh, they probably don't have uh, access to cash. And if they don't have that, they're going out of business. So if they're in business for the long term and, and they're showing, you know, positive cash flow and profitability, you know, you can trust that that is, that is a profitable venture, right? Venture enterprise. And so you, you could probably be, I think it'd be, it's a safer bet to go after those types of, uh, you know, entities, those companies to acquire. And your stock is starting, I mean, potentially you could use that, your stock as, uh, as a good chunk yeah. of how you purchase a company, right? Yeah, ab absolutely. You instead know, right of, now. Instead of having to do cash. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we have cash, right? We could definitely use debt. I mean, we certainly have the the capability to pay down on debt. That's not a problem. Uh, we have zero, you know, bank debt. So it's you know that goes to show that we don't have to borrow money. We have a line of credit that we haven't drawn down on, um, 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 and so we don't foresee drawing that drawing down on our line of credit. Um, we see our cash continuing to improve, so we could buy, you know, uh, do some acquisition through cash. Um, I think our stock is improving, but I I still think we're undervalued. So we rather that's, uh, why, that's why you could use it as currency to, to do a deal, right? I mean, the reason I like seeing that a more stock component mm -hmm. of cash is because then you know hopefully you keep the management team on, right? And right, they right. buy into another getting another bite at the apple. Yeah, yeah, the, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and then they're they're on the same. It's not like they just sell off and then they wait a year and then they go start another business to compete against you, right? Right. I mean <laughs> so, so it's it's a it's a sort of like a you know a double edged sword, of course. I mean, you know, if we do uh, use a lot of equity to uh, you know do the purchase, and then what happens that that dilutes our you know current investors? We don't want to do that. However, if you increase the enterprise value because you're adding on you know a creative deal, right? 
yeah, and the stock improves, everybody's happy, right? And so it's got to be a combination, I think, of both cash and equity, uh, perhaps warrants instead of, you know, shares. A burnout, uh, right? I mean, yeah, I mean there's all kinds of yeah. work the terms, right? Yeah. But we'll do it smartly. And, you know, I think we've we've shown that we can do accretive deals. Uh, we did two small deals. The first one was the Pobaris, which was the uh, uh, intellectual property and a customer that we bought, uh, U.S. Uh, PTO, uh, Patent Trade Office. And that's continuing to, you know, pay dividends. Um, we purchased a company called IT Authorities um, at uh, at the end of 2020, and that added uh, roughly $10 million in profitable revenues. That took a little bit longer than you anticipated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you also had COVID, and you had a supply chain right. issues, and you right. had all kinds of other stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. We had a lot of those things, and we had lots of challenges, but, you know, we... Uh, emerged to the other side, you know, profitable, and we're not circling the drain. We're not burning cash, um, you know. And 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 we we you know the management team uh, that we have currently on board are operators. We know how we know what to do. We know what to tweak in order to make the the you know the acquisition you know accretive. And we did that. Yeah. And you also, you know, people may may look back on your numbers, not understand. So you had you had some big numbers because you had the census right 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 through COVID mm -hmm. right? so and then so you had a big revenue drop off because that was a one off deal yeah yeah right? yeah it was a decennial census so every ten years you know you'll see our revenue go up and then go back down to the normal so you have to sort of learn to exclude the census revenue when it happens it's great. You know, um, we're going to be putting a ton of cash on our onto our balance sheet, um, but when it goes away, the revenue goes away, but we will we'll still keep the cash, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and and the rest of the business, the rest of the business is going to continue to you know uh, uh, you know continue to improve at double digit percentage you know growth, right? Um, th this year we're probably in the you know in the high teens in terms of our growth compared to. You know, last year, year to date, um, you know, revenue increases is, is um, um, like 38 percent from, you know, uh, a 35 percent increase from a quarter last year. So we're just continuing to just kind of, you know, improve on our top line revenue and our non carrier services revenue. Do you have a uh, I mean, I, I guess do you have a, a, a cycle that is I mean, when are you, when's your best quarter? When's your worst quarter? Or is that? Yeah. Is yeah. that not set in stone? Um, it's it's used it's close to being set in set in stone, but you know, depending on what happens with some of these large, uh, you know, um, 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 one timers, license renewal, that kind of thing, um, okay. these things happen. But so far, it has it's been in the first and the second quarter. So traditionally, <laughs> in the federal government business, you know, the slowest quarter is usually the first quarter. Uh, okay. calendar quarter right uh, but because we have these renewals of these uh, licenses that happen in the first and second quarter um it's actually been you know a, a, a you know second quarter has been the the strongest quarter right this this year we may have some one timers that happen in the fourth quarter um and so you may see fourth quarter doing a little bit better and then maybe the that the, the, the first quarter next year may be flat um, and then stairs tap up again in the second quarter. So, um, you know, it, it changes, but um, I think you'll see the general, you know, quarter over quarter improvements and definitely year over year improvements you'll see. Um, it's it's in that trend. Who could, so who could a potential investor look at out there and, and, and draw a parallel to you saying, okay, th this company is very much like, what WYY does. Yeah, I mean, we've been looking around for like a true comparison to us um, because because we have this sort of, you know, holistic approach to mobility management. Um, there are competitors that do telecom lifecycle management or telecom expense management, or they do digital billing and analytics, or they do, you know, TLM or MMS. Um, and then there are companies that do identity management. They all of these, they they do these little slivers of and they focus and specialize in that area. But what we have done is we've taken all of these, you know, whether it's identity management, um, mobility management, 
you know, digital building and analytics, IT as a service. What we have done is we tied them all together into a single integrated solution. And we offer that up to our customer, not as one single solution, but an overall solution. And so within the stovepipe, like for for example, telecom lifecycle management, we'd have competitors like Tango and Calero and MDSL. In the digital billing and analytics, we have Amdocs, Globies, um, um, uh, Brightbill. Um, in the identity management, we have Entrust and Identrust. Um, and of course, IT as a service, everybody and their uncle is in the IT as a service, right? And so, so, but but if you really look at their their uh, um, uh, you know integrated set of solutions, none of our computers uh, competitors can say that they offer that that wide level of solution that is integrated for you know helping our customer get secure, manage, and gain visibility into their mobility assets. And that's where we, I think, you know, we outcompete them. Even even these large integrators that are out there, you know, these large integrators like, you know, SAIC, Lidos, uh, General Dynamics. Um, what what so multiple are those companies trading at? I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do is get a uh, a feel of where you should be priced. Um, you know, as a, as a SaaS company, I mean, you know, like thirty let's say 30 times EBITDA, right? 30 X. Um, but none of these, not, they're, they're certainly not giving us that love yet. <laughs> I mean, it's a matter, it's just a matter of time, Tim. It's just a matter of time. But getting back to this, these systems integrators is just that, you know, they, they can compete with us because, you know, they have these huge, you know, uh, professional services and tech services uh, labor. But what they have chosen to do is to team with us because we have that specialty and that capability and the certification or accreditation soon to be FedRAMP certification. And they're starting to say, gosh, you know why reinvent the wheel? We can team with WidePoint and we can have the best solution that is available on the market, right? And so that's where we've been getting into these, you know, large opportunities where they're holding our hands, taking us into their customers and saying, you know, Mr. Customer, here's the best, uh, you know, uh, MMS solution bar none or uh, device as a service as a service bar none. Right. And so that's what's been happening. And I, we see a lot of, uh, you know, opportunities in our sales pipeline that is just about ready to pop big, big, big deals. Right. And um, you know, when we announce some of these deals, you're going to be like, gosh, that is a pretty big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be able to keep up with capacity? Yeah, well, the good part of it is, is that we've gone through the census, right? Census project was the, the largest managed mobility project, you know, in the world with roughly 700,000 devices um, rolled out to the enumerators. I mean, we acquire all of these devices, image them all, sent them out with all of the right configuration, logistic support to send it all out to, you know, all over the, the country and all over the world. And... Uh, collected all of the data the, through the enumerators and then brought them all back, wiped them clean of any federal government data, recycled them. All do so in terms of scalability, our solution is, you know, based upon our intelligent uh, technology management system, ITMS. And that's a, you know, a system that we built from the ground up specifically to provide security, manageability, and visibility to our, our customers' mobility assets. And so we can definitely size up. Um, and so all of these customers may think that they're the big dogs, but the census was the biggest dog of all, right? And so in 2030, when when things happen, um, you know we're gonna we're gonna compete for that project. Um, things are already you know spinning up with uh, requests for quotes and um, you know small pilot programs and things. But you know the the fact remains is that we did all of that. We did the we supported the 2020 census during a pandemic without losing a single device, without having a single device compromised, you know, rolled them all out, brought them all back, you know, recycled them into inventory, took some of the money back from the device, the inventory uh, recycling, and gave it back to the taxpayers, right? Huh. Okay. Yeah, and so when we talk with Elon, we're going to say, Elon, you know, use us for <laughs> the 2030 census because we can sell you some more money so let's you know what let's let's highlight that actually i mean that's a kind of a joke but it's not it's not and we talked about this before we actually hopped on and started recording was 
the 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 changes that are happening right now or or going to happen uh you know the uh, if the government efficiency uh division i mean you got the smartest guy on the planet mm -hmm. uh, uh, and vivek it, who isn't a dummy either both working together on this thing and when i first thought of I, there was no fear for me about oh boy this could cost wyy some business what it made mm -hmm. me think mm -hmm. is they're going to see how efficient wyy is for these departments mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right yeah. yeah absolutely they may look and say gosh you know dhs how are you saving 300 million dollars on your you know telecom cost and they're going to say well there's this small company called y point that helps us do that right and they say well why haven't we rolled it out for the rest of the government agencies and yet they'll say, well, you know, it is rolled out into, you know, like uh, Department of Defense and, you know, small areas of Department of Justice and so forth and so on. And they're going to say, well, gee, if we rolled it out to the rest of the federal government and we can save somewhere in the order of 15 to 35 percent on their telecom costs government wide. I mean, that could end up being million, right. billions of dollars. Right. 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 And so we could do that. So I think. I think, uh, you know, we do have that angle about telecom lifecycle management cost, telecom, you know, cost management and savings. There's, there's definitely that angle. Um, and I think that that's going to continue on. And, and I think you and I were, were talking earlier about, you know, about DHS and, you know, the, the illegal migration that's happening and, and how it, that was in the forefront of the election. And now with, with Trump taking the White House, I think that, you know, CBP, uh, Customs and Border Protection and Immigrations and Customs Enforcement and DHS overall, you know, maybe getting additional scope and additional funding to enforce those rules and Im implement new technology along the border. Right. Because along the border, you know, there isn't a lot of infrastructure, so they'll have to rely on, you know, wireless communication, mobile technology to be able to patrol all of that, you know, some 3,000 miles of border or 2,800 right. miles. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that, but <laughs> don't fact check me on that. <laughs> but it's thousands of miles of border that don't have infrastructure. Right. You, you can use, you know, wireless uh, technology and mobile technology in order to patrol that. And so uh, that's part of CBP's, you know, mission. And, and so if they, uh, you know, uh, receive additional funding for that, it's well within the scope of our current CWMS contract. The CWMS two O contract, and and as you know, yeah, that is the, that's the one that's coming up for um, twenty twenty end of twenty twenty five, right? Right. Our CWMS two O ends in uh, November of twenty twenty five, and we have already task orders underneath that contract that goes beyond that end of that you know contract period, which is twenty twenty five. But we have task orders that go to twenty twenty six. And this is the second iteration of this contract. So we we won the, the CWMS 1.0. We won the CWMS 2.0, which is coming up for renewal. The CWMS 3.0, um, they actually put out an RFI just recently in July of this year. We responded to it. And uh, from what we know so far, that contract is going to be um, um, based upon our calculation, our current run rate of $754 million for five years. This contract is going to be a 10-year contract. And so, you know, you just multiply the 750 million times two, and you come up with 15, $1.5 billion contract over a 10-year period, right? Um, and we are in the best place to win because past performance. We have excellent past performance with DHS, right? We've been getting excellent ratings on our uh, um, you know, contractor, what they call CPARs. Um, um, essentially, it's a rating system for the federal government. And we've received excellent, you know, reviews from them. Um, we are subject matter experts. We've been performing on this contract for for now almost, uh, you know, fifteen years. Um, um, we also have all of the uh, uh, our systems are integrated in with the Department of Homeland Security, um, with their help, you know, their uh, payroll, their uh, asset management system, inventory system, their help desk system. So in order to pull all of that stuff out, and implement somebody else's system into that it will be a long and arduous you know path to do that and it yes. was very expensive that, and, that, um, that was the question i was going to ask because you've been doing this now 
You've been doing this for what, 11, 12 years? Is that what it is? That what it's been? At, at least. Um, I think the first CWMS contract was, a, it was supposed to be a five year, but it went seven years. Okay. And then this contract is supposed to be a five year, but I think it may go another, you know, seven years. So, you know, like, and then even before that, we actually had a TSA and CBP uh, that was, you know, we had contracts a couple of years before that. So we've been working with the De Department of Homeland Security for like 15 years now, right? So how difficult, I mean, being that you've had no hiccups, right. you were very challenging. I mean, you went through a pandemic, man. I mean, you right. never had right. one before. So that, that was a pretty good test, right? Yeah, yeah. That was a great and task. How, why was, would the government, let's say comes in, you know, somebody comes in, I don't know, Fifty million dollars cheaper than you, yeah, or yeah, hundred yeah. million dollars cheaper than you. Right, right. It's worth taking the risk when you've got a, a company that has executed through really tough environments, and you've never had one issue. Right, absolutely. I mean, you know, the federal government is very risk averse. They love to keep their incumbents, especially those incumbents that have you know excellent past performance, and not only that incumbents that have their systems all hooked in with their system. And in order to replicate that was going to take time and money. The other thing is, is that we have the best disposition in terms of our cybersecurity posture, right? Uh, we have the authorization to operate from the Department of Homeland Security. And, and what ATO means, authorization to operate means, is it uh, means that we meet all of the federal government's cybersecurity requirements. Not only do that do we do that for DHS, we do that for the Department of Homeland Security. We do it for the Department of Commerce. We have ATOs, and of course, pending FedRAMP certification. Um, I think we we mentioned on our earnings call. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. let's highlight this FedRAMP thing because I think there's some. I just think that, that maybe there's some a misunderstanding of what the FedRAMP is going to enable and or or might prevent you from being able to get, I, I think there's confusion out there on that. Yeah, I think that there's a little bit of confusion on the FedRAMP. So what a FedRAMP certification means is, is that if when, if and when you get that, that means uh, this FedRAMP certification is sort of like a super ATO, super authorization to operate. So we have ATOs with DHS, Department of Commerce, and the Department of Justice, DOJ. Um, and we also have it for the DOD, Department of uh, uh, Defense. But what 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 you have to do with each of these organizations is, is that whenever you have an ATO, you have to go through that eight certification accreditation process for each of those separate agencies. Right now, with the FedRAMP, which is a super ATO, once you have that, what that means is, is that any anybody who says, well, you need to, you know, meet all of the cybersecurity requirements for, you know, Department of Education, which may or may not survive, then there's the Department of Energy. But there's plenty of other departments. There's the <laughs> Department of Health and Human Services, uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission. There's a lot of you know other you know agencies that are out there right. that we meet. And so if they ever conduct a a, a a solicitation, they say, "Do you meet all of the cybersecurity requirements?" She says, "We say yes, absolutely. Here is our FedRAMP certification, right?" Or we can say. By the way, we know we meet all of these requirements because we're doing it for the Department of Homeland Security, Department of Justice, Department of Commerce, right? So, right. but but if you have the FedRAMP certification, that gives you you know a, a larger, a higher level of uh, comfort level. How long have you been trying to get the FedRAMP certification? Um, it's going on three years, almost three years, oh, right? Shit. And so 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 you you can imagine how long it would take one of our competitors to get that. Well, right. if it's George Soros, he could just buy his way in. Maybe, maybe. You know, he does have a lot of money. <laughs> I've heard he's a billionaire. I might have heard that somewhere. He might be able to buy his way in. But but um, it would take a long time to go through all of the processes. Um, you know, even if you had, you know, billions of dollars in your pocket, it would still take, you know, 12 months, 18 months in order to get that certification, right? Um it, it, and so we're almost there. Um, we covered on our call that we went from, you know, uh, uh, the FedRAMP um, um, ready and finalizing uh, status. They, they moved us to the next level 
In other words, we provided all of the. Um, uh, there's there's nothing. There's nothing. They're they're like not holding you up because you, you have to produce some big thing for them to. I mean, you, you've gone through the bulk of the process, right? Yes. So we've gone through um, all of the questions that GSA has sent us. We provide them all of our solution and all of our answers to that. And it's been, um, you know, roughly now six to eight weeks since we seen uh, the last time they asked us for any kind of additional information. And as I said, they quietly moved us from, you know, the, the FedRAM ready status to the FedRAM ready finalizing status. Um, and now the, the final step left is being FedRAM authorized, right? And so we're almost there, uh, but it's not holding us back from winning contracts because as I said, we have ATOs, authorization to operate from, you know, th four uh, uh, federal government departments. And so, you know, that sh that shows, you know, anybody who's looking to, you know, acquire our services gives them a comfort level saying, yeah, they can meet these, you know, cybersecurity requirements that we have. Uh, right. And of course, FedRAM is the final stamp of approval that says you have it. Um, you know, I mean, none of our competitors can say. That's not, that, that doesn't sound like it would it would restrict you from anything no 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 um but it will you know like it, it will help us you know again further out compete our our competitors because again we have these atos at the various departments but having this fed ramp ato which is sort of like quote unquote super ato um that that will help us and there's and there's nobody else that you know of that that is in your wheelhouse that that has that Nope, not as as far as we know, and, and we've been looking in the the FedRAM marketplace. Um, so you can go down and and take a look there too, to see if there's anybody there out there um, that is, is even in the review stage, right? And so we know that uh, you know the com our competitors are not out there, um, and so we feel pretty pretty good. You got a hell of a head start. Yeah, we got a we got a good head start, and I think. Um, you know, we will be in, uh, you know, pretty good shape once we have it. Um, but it's not keeping us from winning any new contract because we know and the government knows that we can meet those uh, cybersecurity requirements. Right. So it's 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 we're we're, we're in a good place. And uh, it looks like. Uh, uh, I think the closing price, it says here for twenty three, I think. So we yeah. we, we we held uh, the the. Uh, um the 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 rise up today usually somebody dinks us well i guess they did dink us they dinked us right at the end of the day um it looked like it was it was trading at 428 and we closed at 423 yeah so you know what that's not on accident either that's not on accident somebody's doing that are oh, you doing this tim <laughs> no. I, i'm gonna show you i'm yeah. gonna show you okay you know, i i you know Jim, you know, I, I, I am a fundamental guy before I was a technical guy. I didn't even believe in technicals. I thought it was just voodoo. Yeah, right. what, what is looking at a chart going to tell somebody about where our stock is going? But it really is kind of crazy. Uh, it's kind of spooky even uh, at times because price has memory. That's what happens. And you get supply. You get supply at certain levels. That yeah, right. And... and if you look at so really it's the psychology of the people that are investing right it's the psychology of the investor i mean there there is definitely some psychology there uh round numbers are, are a big deal right okay. i mean because you went from a penny stock to a dollar stock now you're no longer a penny stock now you're a dollar stock right i mean now you're a two dollar stock i mean it, those things are, are psychological for people but what you can see is you can see all the touch points Right. So you've actually got, and this is interesting because let's see, you've got um, right here. So you can see how this acted. Can you see that portion now? Yeah, yeah. Because of my stuff is still. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I'm Three, gonna, three four or something. I'm going to move this over that way. Everybody can see it. Okay. Yes. Hold on. So let me put it that way. Okay. So you can see right over here, right? Mm -hmm. This 
this little area acted as support right there. It came down to that line and it touched it and then it bounced off of it, right? And it went up into this area of congestion here, which is around $4.50 or so. Mm -hmm. And then it came back down and it, when it, it actually kind of tried to hang out here and it wanted to fail, right? Mm -hmm. And then when that failed, it was more of a waterfall. Right, right. So now you came back up and you look over here, what acted as resistance on the way back up? The support. It was that same spot. <laughs> right. right. Right? You got up, you kissed it, literally kissed it, mm -hmm. back down again. And then you started popping back up and you got up there and it was it acted as a resistance area again, but now it's trying to act as the floor. Right? Mm -hmm. So essentially you've got this little battle going on between what is that 435 4 no 450 450 is kind of like your spot right right there's some resistance there if you could new, new resistance level yeah yeah if you could take out 450 and close above it it, it it always matters where you close that's that's what matters where you trade throughout the day means nothing Right. It's where you close. Like if you close below an area of support that the tech guys are going to say you're it's a broken stock. Right. If you break above an area of resistance and you hold above that where you close matters. And right now it's it's a battle of, of who's who's going to win, who's going to win out. Right. So if you've got potential catalysts that are coming out and this is where the fundamental part comes in and where it gets it, it gets interesting and this is where it pays to to know both not just be the technical guy but to also understand what's fundamentally happening within the company and if i'm seeing that jen seems like a really happy go lucky you know kind of like no stress uh kind of guy right now i'm thinking Maybe Jen's got some good stuff coming up, right? <laughs> we have some good stuff coming up. You know, yeah. I mean, we got a lot of good things happening. We got we got a lot of stuff in the you know in the pipeline. As I said, material opportunities, and we just need to close on a few um, of these. You know, just just one you know DAS opportunity or mobile anchor opportunity. You'll see. You know that that you know the the inflection point continue to improve, right? That was one of the things I wanted to talk about too. Is that throughout this process, if we go back to when you the stock had a crazy run up to almost sixteen bucks a share, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was, that company back then and this company now today, mm -hmm. how different are they, Jen? We are a lot more you know healthy than we were back then. You're much more, I would say, diversified. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. you still have a good portion of your business that's government related. Yes, yes. But but you've expanded those government divisions, right? right? Nice. So and now you are you are having some wins in the commercial. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is yeah. which is all good because now you're diversifying away from just having one big contract that could kill you. Right. 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 Yeah. And so, you know, you know, when we close some of these material, you know, commercial customers, you'll see, you know, that that change that the whole dynamic maybe will be, you know, 50, 50, 50 commercial, 50, you know, federal. And then, you know, trying to keep that 50, 50. Um, but we're not, you know, like, uh, you know, trying to keep it 50, 50 just for the sake of being 50, 50. It's nice to be, you know, to be able to have some more customers on the commercial side to off, you know, balance our, our federal government side, but there's a lot of, you know, green field opportunities, both on the government side and on the commercial side. So, you know, we're going to try to close as much business. We don't care whether it's federal, whether it's commercial, um, you know, we're just going to close more business and, right. and, and our top line should reflect that our profitability should reflect it also. And your track record of, of, Positive. Being a reliable yeah. service, right? I mean, yeah, we we are a, you know a, a critical you know service, right, for the federal government, and, and I think mobility management is a an essential service 
not only for the Fed, it's feds, but also for these large enterprise customers. And that's why they're looking at us because they want to figure out how they can manage their cost and they can have a third party to handle soup to nuts, all of their management needs for their mobile devices. Right. Um, and so they're looking at us and, um, 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 the, the partner that we teamed with to do win the, um, uh, the census project, which was CDW. They're also, you know, one of our partners for the DAS, you know, device as a service, and they know what we can do, right? They right. know what we can do. They know that we can, we have scalability. Um, um, and, and, you know, we're, we're in the process of closing those deals with CDW, with Synex, uh, with uh, SAIC, with, uh, you know, Lidos. And, and so partner list goes on and on. And they're, they're looking at us now. They're coming to us with deals because they know that we can, we can scale up and we can answer the mail when it comes down to delivering, you know, on all of the contractual requirements. What do you think the biggest challenge is for white, white, white point? What's the biggest? Um, I think the biggest challenge right now is, you know, keeping our staff, um, you know, at the level that we need. Um, there's been a lot of increases. I don't know if you've, you've seen, you know, Boeing where they, settled on a 30 some percent increase over the next three years or something like that. I mean, it's unsustainable. I mean, we, you know, we can't change our rates, you know, like every time inflation rate goes up. So hopefully we're back to sort of the normal, you know, two, 3% inflation rate right. uh, here. And that should help to, to, you know, mitigate some of that risk. Cause like we have to keep up with the, with the Joneses, if you will, for all the labor rates. And so um, that's, that's going to be the 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 you know the the risk area for us, but of, but fortunately, our solutions are automated. A lot of it is automated, and so as we add on these customers, uh, the new customers, they'll be that much more you know profitable. But we may have to spend some of that profitability, uh, um, you know, compensating our our staff. Would you say that that brand recognition might be a, a challenge as well? Um, brand recognition is always a challenge for a small company like us. Um, but, um, you know, we've been out there looking at, um, you know, uh, getting a social media presence. We're looking at LinkedIn. We're looking at, you know, TikTok. We're looking at Facebook and we're, we're trying to get our message out there. And so we've been spending a little bit, uh, um, um, additional resources on that. And um, that's one of the metrics that we look at and to see how many clicks we get on, you know, on TikTok or or on Facebook and so forth. So we, we've been steadily increasing our social media presence. And so we're, we're going to get some more, uh, you know, brand recognition. And, you know, as we close on some of these DAS opportunities, what you're going to see is a lot of these commercial folks, they're going to be looking at you know, us, and they'll see, you know, when they're, when they get their device, they'll see white point on it. Right. And so that will be a, you know, a, a, a big marketing, uh, um, you know, tool for us. I, I, I will say that <laughs> when you, when we first met, here was a tech company that's website was not very yeah innovative. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, to to be fair, you know, we come out of the, the federal government side and we were more of the gray IBM type of, you know, button down collar, you know, that kind of business. But, you know, we, we've learned over time and we're in the process of revamping our website and getting more into the social media, you know, getting, you know, uh, uh, to court other than all of the baby boomers. And so, so we are. Have I have seen measurable. I mean, even today, I said to you, your backdrop, yeah, yeah, I mean, is looking cool, man. I mean, you're starting to look hip now, you know. We're trying, we're trying, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's you know, we always believed in you know the the meat of the message, um, and and sometimes you have to sell the sizzle, right? And so right. we're trying to you know sell the sizzle. Right. So, I mean, there's a couple of things. Just to just wrap this up, you're in a great position. You have no need to raise capital. You've nope. got it's probably some, this is probably, a, I, I would imagine, a pretty good time 
to be looking to potentially do acquisitions uh, because I think they're probably priced better, right? Um, is there is there is there a place for artificial intelligence and and deep machine learning for you? These yeah, yeah. So we, we've been uh, you know spending a little bit of time looking into that. Um, you know, we have a twenty four by seven help desk, and a lot of the calls that are coming in can be triaged using AI. Um, we we test driven a few of those solutions to see if we can you know uh, um, do more with the same level of you know staff that we have and um, you know there's a there's a there's some good um, you know uh, AI you know bots that can actually you know um, it actually has an avatar that looks like a regular you know like a like a person um, and some of some of the 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 avatars are so realistic people get sort of uh, uh, um, uh, freaked out is the word. That's a scientific word. They get freaked out about it, and so they they've actually tuned back the re, you know the realness of the avatar, so that you know that it's a it's a, a you know like a fake avatar that is right. Fake. And so we looked at some of those solutions, and um, we have to look at how do we implement that because the avatar will have to have access to our back end database that has you know PII information, right? And they can say, oh, you know, uh, um, you know, Tim, I see that you have a, you know, a droid, you know, net, ultra net, net note 25. And we see that you have uh, located in, in Pakistan. Are you going to go to Pakistan anytime soon? And you'd say, no, I, I, well, I don't. And we say, well, what we can do for you. And, and so it'll go through that whole thing, like as in a regular conversation with you. Right. Right. Um, and so that will allow us to scale even faster. Right. And so um, we're going to try to implement some of the AI for that. Also, um, we're looking at AI to audit our, you know, the invoices. Right now we have routines that go through, you know, various, you know, like I want to say like maybe uh, a three feet of, you know, paper invoices sometimes um, that we ingest through OCRs. Um, we've largely um, um, implemented EDI, electronic data interchange to suck all of that data in without getting the paper invoices. But some of them are still paper invoices. But um, once we get all of the invoices, whether it's you know paper or electronic, we've turned them into electronic format. And then we can run through all of these, these charges using these algorithms now. Um, and so hopefully we can turn some of our you know, automated checking, which is based upon you know, like certain rules that we put together. So we can feed those rules into the AI bots and the AI bots can get smarter and faster and run through them, you know, much, much quicker than. Right. Which just means you get more profitable. Yeah, we get more profitable. We get faster throughput um, and we can process more invoices. Right. And so um, these are all good things that we can we're looking at Im implementing. Um, and, and so we're going to put some business intelligence also in our digital billing and analytics. Um, so we're looking at all of those things. But right now we're just kind of you know, analyze analysis at this point. We don't want to send spend the boatload of money in CapEx um, and without, you know, a, a return on investment. And so we're doing it very carefully, very methodically. And uh, there are some opportunities there that definitely. Oh, that's that's fantastic. You look good, man. I mean, I actually, I, I think. You too. I mean, you look very relaxed, got the stars and stripes on, looking good. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I actually do think that we, uh, I mean, even though half the country thinks that we're, we're really bad things are going to happen, I think we're going to see some really positive things happening. I really, I truly believe that. Yeah, I because think so. you've got seven companies that have been holding up the markets for the last, I don't yeah. know, yeah. two, three years. Yeah. I, uh, I, yeah. There's still a lot, a lot of diversity. You know, there's, we need diversity for sure in the company. You know, diversity. You don't, you're not going to have to worry about that either, right? That's not going to be a pain in your neck anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of that going, kind of going away. Um, and, and uh, you know, I, you know, while I think diversity is good, um, we we still have to make sure that we're not just doing it for diversity's sake. And you these, take, I mean, I look at it like this. The NFL draft. Yeah, yeah. Who do you take? You take the best player available. Take the best player on the board. Bottom line. Okay? I don't care what color... 
I don't care what sex. I don't care any. If it's the best player on the board, that's who I want on my team. Yeah, you have to take the best. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and so and if that person you know meets the the diversity requirement, great. Um, you know, hopefully, you know that, that that ends up being like that. But you know, you can't you know shoehorn certain things into just for the sake of you know meeting a quota. Right. That's that's just plain dumb. I mean, the orchestra wouldn't do that. The football team wouldn't do that. I don't know of anybody that would actually do that, right? You don't, you, you play to win. And if you want to be around for a long, long time, you take the best players. I'm sorry. Yeah, you have to take the best player available. I mean, that's, I think to, to me that that is a, you know, unassailable truth, right? If you want to win and you want to have the best, you know, uh, um, you know, team, you got to take the best player available. Right. I mean, that's, that's the way it is. Jen, I love talking to you. I could talk to you every, every day, man. I mean, you kind of like lifted me up today, you know, yeah, I'll come out, I'll come out to Vegas and uh, you know, we can go out and, you know, have some dinner. Um, and, and, you know, I don't know if you gamble, I'm a terrible gambler. <laughs> I, 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 you can't live. Well, I shouldn't say that there are people that live here and they do that for a living. I personally am not good at that. It's just a little entertainment. That's it. <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> You got a shot at winning some, winning some money, but most of the time you end up leaving your money there. I do all my, all my betting is in the market on good companies that are going to have a positive impact on humanity. That's, that's, that's my thing. There you go. There you, go. Right. you didn't vote on the, the Trump, uh, you know, Paul fight. I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, the, the Tyson Jake Paul and Tyson fight. I wanted Tyson to kick his ass so bad because yeah. I don't know. He's the same age as I am. <laughs> right. And he I, looks, he looks a lot older than you, Tim. And he is, he was just, man, I love watching Tyson. I love watching Tyson. I love his whole story. I like him as a person. I think he's a really good dude. And I wanted him to knock that dude out so bad, but I knew if he didn't do it in the first or second round. Yeah. He wasn't going to do it. There's just no way. I think he was holding back, Tim. I mean, I I could see how quick he was, right? And he, I think he was holding back. He was biting his glove. Why was he biting his glove, Tim? Jake Paul, he he played it right. He tied him up the first and second round. He mm -hmm. kept tying him up, right? He got in close and he would tie him up, yeah. and he wore him down, right? I, I I really I he never got a good clear shot. I mean, he never got. I remember back when he was, he would come out of that corner and he would go right over to you right. and he would just pummel you. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean. He didn't do any of that. He didn't do any of that. But he's 58 years old, man. Yeah, yeah. Right. He was, all I know is he was biting on that glove. I think he, I think he was pissed. I think yeah. he's pissed. I think he wants to still be that guy, right? And then. I watched an interview afterwards. He said, you know, I started, when I started training for this thing, he's like, what the F am I thinking? Yeah, right. Yeah. What am I thinking? Yeah. But what he really was thinking about is he's thinking about his kids, right? He's, he's setting his kids up. He got $20 million. Not too shabby. Not too shabby for a half hour, man. Yeah. Right? yeah. I, mean... <laughs> I mean, what can you, what can I say? Say okay. whatever you want about the guy. Tell you the bottom line is he went eight rounds with a kid that is bigger than him and is half his age. I think right? he was holding back. I think he's holding back, Tim. I think he had like some sedative in his glove. He was biting on it so that he wouldn't actually go out and launch into a you know like a kid's killer instant. Tyson would do that though. I mean, I just don't think Tyson would do that. I I, I think he would have loved to have shown the world that at 58 years old, you still got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think he would have really liked to do that. Or he wouldn't have got his money if he would have done that. Why well, wouldn't he have got his money? <laughs> he would have got his money. That wasn't the contract, man. You got to, you, he said, you got to bite on the catnip and your glove. You cannot, <laughs> you cannot, you cannot punch the money maker. You cannot punch the money maker. Oh, I don't know, baby. Baby, I just don't see it. Yeah, I don't right? see it. I, I didn't see that fire in, in Mike that you would see, man. He was, oh, he was so incredible to watch. Definitely not. So, all right, listen. Let's let's. Uh, when, when should we have another follow up? When, when should we come back and say? 
probably like at the next, uh, you know, um, maybe before the earnings call, because the, our next one, the, the year end one is going to be at the end of uh, March. So after we do our, you know, we're probably going to do a press release, um, you know, the earnings release or like an earlier one, because okay. we don't want people to wait uh, until the end of the, you know, the actual reporting period. Um, I think we did that last year. We were probably planning on doing something like that. And maybe we do it right after that. So which would have been in like end of Ju January, beginning of February. As we're heading into the, I mean, to the end of the year, yeah. right? I mean, you got the holidays. I mean, you're probably not going to see any big new contract. That that probably all happened. Would that happen? <laughs> All right, I'll dig it. I, it's, I, certainly, it's certainly possible. I mean, we we have uh, you know these items that are kind of pending that that's gone through a you know a large majority of the sales process. Okay, and, so, and and actually, if you've got a new year coming up, then they they might have to button that up before the end. Of right, the year. they want to work it all into their budgets and stuff for for twenty twenty five, and so um, you know, hopefully, we'll see something. Um, but you're right. I mean, you know, it is the the holidays, and and so people kind of get into that holiday mode, and they're like, yeah, I'll take care of it, and you know, at, in the new year. But you know, hopefully, there's some folks that are you know you know hard chargers that they'll you know check you know sign the the document and then go away and say, okay, I signed the the contract last year. Where are you? That's, and then we'll say it's only the first week of January. <laughs> 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 All right, Jen. I love your story, man. You know I do, and I'm going to keep pounding the table on you guys until people start to realize this is a really, really yeah, underappreciated great story. Yeah, yeah. they're a great opportunity, right? It is. It is, and I think you know we've we've shown in the last you know couple of months you've seen the the the, the you know consistent move upwards, and um, I think it's it's going to continue to improve um, as we show better financial performance in 2025. Yeah. No, okay. you, you've done a great job, man. You just haven't been rewarded yet, but you will be. Yeah, we will be. We will be, you and I both, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim. You okay. have a, a good week, and we'll talk soon, okay, man? Uh, hold on one second. Thank you for tuning in to another CEO interview here at Alpha Wolf Capital. Today we have Jin Kang from WYY Wide Point. I hope you enjoyed today's interview, and if you did, do us a favor, give us a like, how about giving us a share? And while you're at it, make sure you smash that subscribe button because that is very important to us here at Alpha Wolf Capital. And we appreciate you taking the time to do that. Until next time, stay safe. Alpha Wolf Capital wishes you the very best of success.